Hello everybody, Naughty Nana does. How's everybody on this Sunday? Hope everybody's doing good. I'm doing pretty good. Woke up with a pulse, put my feet on the floor. I think the day will get a little better than that. It's glorious out here, sun shining. Not bad for September, just saying. Um, I'm going to do an update on tomorrow, uh, yesterday's story there. Um, there was, uh, I was watching uh, Midas Touch Ben Micellus. He did this. So I just wrote it down. So this is from him and um, Yasher Alley at Yasher uh, posted. The woman behind the Facebook uh, post spreading a harmful, baseless lie about Haitian immigrants eating local pets that helped surge Springfield, Ohio into the national spotlight said she had no idea and no firsthand knowledge of any such incident and now is filled with regret and fear as a result of the ensuing fallout. Um, quote, it just exploded into something I didn't mean to happen. Well, maybe you shouldn't have posted that, lady. Maybe you shouldn't have posted that. And when things started getting hateful, maybe you should have looked into it and corrected it or taken it down. That's just a mom's opinion. My kids always say, do you have to be everybody's moms? Yeah, sometimes because I'm the one that catches them doing all the bullshit when mommy says, oh, my son wouldn't do that. And I said, oh, yeah, he did. And here's the pictures. Anyway, let's get into this a little further. Now, the full story of that is on uh, the, the link is bit.ly slash three lowercase zq capital M capital J small case V two. So if you want to read it all, it's there. And then the other picture came out a couple days later when they saw a black man carrying two geese. That went viral. Now, TMZ reported on this, and they said the uh, Ohio Division of Wildlife says the man was actually just picking up two geese hit in a Columbus car accident. And Columbus is about 45 miles away from Springfield. And there is absolutely no proof that he's an immigrant and absolutely no proof that he took the birds to eat them. He was just moving them. So... This is the kind of crap MAGA spews. One, to stoke hate, and two, to scare the supreme shite out of people. When a former president, in name only, because he didn't, he spent a whole year on the golf course, 362 friggin' days of his four year uh, presidency, does a post debate in which Kamala spanked him so hard he called her Stormy. That's what one of my subscribers said, thought it was good, I thought I'd steal it. Um, at a rally that he's so brutally lost, um, even after being told the Springfield story was a lie, it was hurtful, and just never happened, he brought up the geese that the man was carrying and added that since the debate. Shady Pants, Trump's pick for VP and Senator of uh, Ohio, being in the know, uh, in government works and stuff would have the whole story on this stuff more than the average Joe would have or news agency for that matter. So, um, he knows it's all bullshit yet. He can, uh, he was confronted in the spin room after the debate and said, well, they have many illegal Im uh, immigrants flooding into Ohio and they're straining resources like schools. And because he said that what happens the very next day, two elementary schools had to be evacuated for bomb threats. But yeah, let's look after the children in vitro, not after they're born. Don't get, don't get shaken there because that they don't care after they're born, apparently, by the looks of this. So two days in a row, two elementary schools. Elementary means little kids, you know, K through grade seven or something. Yeah. Yeah. Two days in a row. And as Michael Cohen said, these assholes with two teeth and three brain cells, they eat this shit up and they continue to spread it because the wannabe hillbilly there, shady pants, doesn't, well, maybe he knows that they're a little gullible because they, um, they're they hardworking people, they're loving people, uh, probably give you the shirt off their back, um, but they don't have the resources to fact check this stuff and they believe they're so-called leaders. Well, they got voted in, so they must know what they're talking about. 
They went to fancy schools. He's got a good education. So we must, we got to believe them, right? No, you don't because they're lying their ass off and they're making you look like fools behind your back. If they only knew guys like Shady Pants, Ted Cruz, looks like friggin' uh, Grandpa Munster for Christ's sake, and Maggoty Trader, the handjob harlot, Venmo boy Matt Gates, and Trump are all counting on these people. They're all counting on you. Who, by the way, I know you trust them. Don't. Um, they trust you not to fact check this stuff. They really do. They figure they'll do the fact checking for you. And then all the news comes out and said, no, that's all bullshit. So they make jokes. They laugh at your gullibility. They laugh that every time he holds up a pair of friggin' Timu uh, sneakers, that you're going to spend three, four hundred dollars on them. And they're laughing their ass off all the way to the bank. And you're going to the poorhouse. Yeah, uh, they hook you by telling you, oh, we're just like you are. We know how bad you have it. No, they fucking don't know. Not one of them had to go to a food bank at the end of the month because it was too much month at the end of the money. Not one of them. J.D. Vance is saying that nobody's going to listen to a billionaire and change their vote. Well, he's uh, out there stumping for the billionaire for now. So that's uh, stock tanks all the way. Um, yeah, that's the billionaire that he's stumping for. Never mind what she's doing. She's doing something good for everybody. And then she's not telling anybody who to vote for. She's saying make sure you're registered to vote. She's a smart cookie. None of them was ever evicted or put out on the street because they couldn't afford rent. And notice none of them came to your rescue to try and fix those things either. Joe Biden tried, but because it's got to go through Congress and through committees before it gets to the floor, none of them bastards, Republicans, would vote for it. So go knock on their doors and tell them, do something. But they won't because they don't give a shit about you. Get it through their head. They got into politics to make money. That's all. You don't count, no matter what they're telling you. Yeah, none of them got thrown out on their ass because they couldn't afford rent. And none of them is working in, in government for $7.25 an hour. None of them. They're making more than you'd make in five, six years in one year. $176,000. What could you do with that kind of money? Your family would be a lot better off. Your family would be eaten. Wouldn't be going to food banks. But do they give a shit about that? No, they absolutely do not. They spew all these lies about how the country's going to go to shit if Kamala Harris uh, gets elected. Caracas, Venezuela has the lowest crime rate. He's thinking of holding the economic conference down there next because there's no crime because they sent all their criminals, all the people from insane asylums and mental hospitals. They're the same goddamn thing. He keeps saying it twice and sent them all to America. No, they feckin' didn't. There's a civil war going on down there right now. Oh, my God, give your head a shake. All this garbage just stokes more hate, more fear, more hate, and it's all goddamn lies. It's all lies. Yes, and I'm saying goddamn on a Sunday. Mia culpa, mia culpa, mia culpa. Anyway, Kamala will come for your guns. Well, three and a half later, uh, years later, you still have your fucking guns, don't you? You still have friggin' Closets full of them because nobody seems to want to lock them up or take the trigger or put trigger guards on or anything like that or have red flag laws. You still got your guns. Tim Walls and Kamala Harris are both gun owners. They're not coming for your guns. Don't listen to that trash. It's all lies. He spewed all this same shit in 2016 and 2020. And he started in 2016 saying, if he doesn't lose, it's rigged. Everything's rigged against him. Have you ever met anybody in your life that's never done anything absolutely wrong and the whole world's out to get him? That's called a loser. Somebody that has to blame everybody else and he's not doesn't have the balls enough to stand up and say he's wrong once in a while. He doesn't have the balls to do that. So it's always everybody else's fault. If you had a kid like that that lied about every single question you asked them, you'd be taking them to the psychologist to say, what the hell is wrong with this kid? Why can't he tell the truth? He lies about lying. So yeah, they'd be taking that kid to a psychologist to find out what's going on. So the shady opportunists has all jumped on board when he got elected. And I mean, they came out of the goddamn uh, woodwork and out of friggin' uh, rocks like Steve Bannon. As soon as he started campaigning, Steve Bannon was there. He's a dirty, seedy, oh, scummy 
Scummy looking. P, Rick. He saw a huge opportunity to make a ton of friggin' cash, and he hooked his wagon to his mark. And that mark was Donald Trump, because he knew through everybody else's stories that all you had to do to get him to listen to your friggin' uh, scam, all you had to do was flatter him a little bit. And he'd bend over so you could blow as much smoke as you could possibly tolerate straight square up his arse. And he'd sit there, and that would be the last thing that he would spout to the public. And that's his currency. Blow smoke up his ass as hard and as fast and as much as you can. And he'll do whatever you like. How do you think Russia snagged him? Way when he started dating Ivana. You know, his the Trump lump's mom? Yeah, when he started dating her, KGB said, Ooh, Jesus. And that's Putin was KGB back then, and he thought, Ooh, geez, it's not going to be hard to get anything out of the United States if he does anything good. So KGB operatives met with him while he was dating Ivana. She was from the Czech Republic, by the way. Remember that? The old uh, Czechoslovakia? Yeah. And her dad still lived there. So if she wanted to go visit her dad, she towed the party line. If the dad was going to be able to come to America to visit the daughter because you had to be allowed out of the country and get permission... He had to toe the party line. And uh, they were both feeding shit to the KGB, I have no doubt, in my military mind. None. Um, the communist praised his business prowess. He was the best businessman, his management, and his vast, shitty, trashy-looking, gilded world. And as soon as he was president-elect, or when he was campaigning, actually, the Russians moved into Trump Tower. The day he was elected, the Chinese businessmen moved into Trump Tower. So they were all there. But the funny thing with the Chinese was, as soon as he lost the election and the day he left the White House, Joe Biden's inauguration, they packed up and left Trump Tower. Is that just a coincidence or what? Yeah. Um... They planted people all over New York when he was dating her. And the uh, Plaza Hotel, when he bankrupted that, it's funny how we made a deal for um, the Saudis to buy it. Yeah. Now, he's gotten away, Trump has gotten away with more shite than... A million people in the States would never be able to get away with. One person wouldn't be able to get away with half the shit he got away with. Because he thinks laws and rules are for suckers. He likes to use that word a lot. Just like uh, my fellow servicemen and women who gave the ultimate for their country. Suckers and losers. And that's what he thinks laws and rules are for. He's above it, right? Well, when he doesn't get elected, his ass is going to prison. And his celly is going to be making him get on his knees and wash his drawers in the shitter. Just saying. I love that. He surrounds himself with the golden gaudy, all Russian oligarch style. Because when he's doing those friggin' pageants, he got to see it firsthand in Russia, right? So, um, he was a Russian asset for way over 40 years. Why else were the two Alexis the first visitors to the Oval Office? They came in there empty-handed and left with a big folder full of documents. And they were laughing about it, and he gave them secrets while the cameras were rolling. But he had guys like the friggin' uh, Keebler guy there in charge of uh, DOJ and stuff, so nobody got charged with anything. So if those opportunistic, crazy people like Stephen Voldemort Miller, the racist that hates anyone basically with a tan... Um, or your Democrat, was the reason there are so many orphans at the border because of his border policies that he whispered into the mango moose knuckles ass. Trump is too stupid to come up with that shit on his own. All he wants to do is shoot people. Just shoot them in the legs. Can't we do that? Yeah. So Steve Bannon knew the wall was never going to get built. He knew that because he got his base to believe it Sucked them in so hard 
that they gave their hard-earned money to him to continue the cash grab. Because what he did said, well, Trump couldn't get, couldn't get it done, so we'll get it done for him, and we'll call it We Build the Wall. Well, We Build the Wall made a few million dollars and uh, went all in Biden and his, or Biden, went all in Steve Bannon's pockets, buying himself jackets and cars. He was arrested on a multi-billionaire's friggin' yacht who was also in on this scam. So they were all laughing at you. But Steve Bannon got arrested for that. He raked in millions for himself and his buddies. He also knew that Trump lost the election. So when Rudy Giuliani and the bunch of fringe arseholes that got the game plan written up at the White House, December 18th, Maggie Trader, Enrique Terrio, who was the, um, the chapter member in the United States because a fucking Canadian thought that shit up, if you can believe it. Uh, Mark Meadows was there, Pat Cipollone. Uh, Patrick Byrne, Overstock CEO, like he has a lot to do with government. The disgraced friggin' general, Mike Flynn, um, Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani, all in that meeting. And they had a private meeting for 10 to 15 minutes with Donald Trump and spread out their game plan to how he could say it was a big lie. So they planted the bug that Venezuela meddled in the elections. The big lie was written, scripted, and the logistics were carried out for January 6th. The fake electors were counterfeiting the paperwork as that meeting was being done. So this was all done far in advance. It wasn't like, oh, we didn't know this was fake. Like hell you didn't. So this is how lies, disinformation, and greed gave birth to the insurrection heard around the world. And all they needed was a mark. And that mark, or sucker, was Donald J. Trump. Can't stand being a loser. That, in my opinion, was his, what his father called him when he bankrupted three casinos, lost the Plaza Hotel, who, by the way, was bought by the Saudis, remember that. Hence, the relationship and the payment for the Plaza Hotel was going to be for services expected. After he got in, a hundred billion dollars went for arms for the Saudis for services rendered. Anyway, not in Anna loves you very much. Uh, please subscribe to the video. Leave us a like. Leave us a comment. Love reading those. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. This went on for 17 and, ooh, yeah, 17 minutes. Anyway, this is a long one. Had a lot to say. I love you so much. Be good, be safe, and please be good to you first so you can be good to somebody else. God knows we need some good going around. Mwah. I love you so much. Have a very fabulous, wonderful rest of your weekend. I love you.